Am I the a-hole for not giving my estranged sister a place to stay with her kids while she was on her way to our parents? I have been estranged from my sister ever since she carried out an affair with my ex-fiancé. I found out because my brother caught the two of them together. She tried to get my blessing for them to be together. I just told her to consider herself down one sister and told her I never wanted to see her again. I stuck to my word. She married my ex, had kids with him, and has stuck by him through his destroying their finances. Then three weeks ago, he was arrested and my sister found out the guy who was letting her and the kids stay was no longer okay and so she called family members. My aunt told her that my parents were out of town and she should go to their house. My parents were on vacation and my sister lives three states from our parents and apparently I'm right in the middle. She called our aunt to say she couldn't find a place she could afford overnight, so aunt gave her my address and told her to stay with me. She showed up. I shut the door. She called aunt. Aunt called me and told me the story. I refused to let them stay. Aunt reasoned it was just for one night, but I stuck to my word. Aunt ended up paying for a place for them to stay. By the time my parents got home, sister was there and nobody had told them. Then my saying no turned into the debate of the whole family. My siblings, the ones I still talk to, all said that I should never have been a place she would even dare show up at. One of them also refused to let her stay overnight, so they were not afraid to stand up for me. My parents say they understand. They just hated that my sister's kids were upset at not having anywhere to go at night, and that the place they ended up at was scary. They told me they understood. They just wished I could have found some way to love her kids and give them a place to sleep at least. But they also know I never met them and were strangers to each other and them to my husband and kids. Other members of the family are not seeing it that way though, and I have been told I should be ashamed of myself, that I'm hateful and that they hope I need to beg her for something one day and she leaves me to dust too, and my kids. According to my siblings, she has been saying how angry she is that I didn't give her kids a place to stay, and she has apparently called me a heartless witch. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Oh no, your sister who is such a stand-up person that she slept with your fiancé thinks you are a bad person. Who cares what she thinks? Not the a-hole. Why is no one mentioned the aunt is the real villain here? Opie is not the a-hole, but she sure is. Other members of the family are not seeing it that way and I have been told I should be ashamed of myself. So this, the aunt is not only the a-hole, but I almost wonder if there can be legal action that can be taken due to the usually blatant privacy violation of giving her address to an estranged and not wanted ex-sister, not the a-hole. Of course not the a-hole. Your sister seems to make terrible choices all the time. Marrying your ex, leaving her home in a hurry, having three kids and no money to spend the night. None of this is your problem or responsibility. I don't think she had much choice in leaving the house. It wasn't hers or my ex's, and they weren't staying there for a very long at that point. But that's what happens when someone makes you lose your home. She had a choice in who she married, how she got into her situation and myriad other decisions between marriage and moving. This is all on her, even if it's her idiot husband, thank god you got away from that mess, that got them kicked out, she chose him so she bears blame for her situation. Imagine being so naive, or such an a-hole, you think screwing your sister's fiancé, then marrying and having kids with him, will work out. The sister isn't sorry at all, judging by how she is weaponizing her kids to better suit her poor me narrative. The aunt who gave her Opie's address and ended up buying her a hotel room could have bought the damn room in the first place. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my mom I won't talk to my half-siblings until they can apologize? I-19 female lost my dad when I was six. My mom and him didn't have the best marriage, so she was dating again six months after he died and met her current husband 11 months after his passing. She introduced him to me right away and she did ask me how I felt and wanted to know how I was doing but nothing I said really made a difference to the pace of their relationship. They started having babies right away and have six children together ranging from the age of 11 down to four. The biggest problem here is with the 11, 10, and 9-year-olds. They're kids, so again, I could be a huge A for this, but here goes. Around three years ago, the three half-siblings I mentioned started telling me to call their dad, Dad. That's what it started with. He's not Jim, he's dad, kind of thing. I explained to them that he was their dad, but not my dad, and I showed them photos of my dad. After a while of that, they told me it was mean to not let him be my dad, though since he was the best one and he wanted to be my dad too. 
I told them that didn't change who my dad was. I asked them how they would feel if he died and mom brought home a new dad. They told me that wouldn't happen, slash that was wrong, slash different and all sorts of stuff. I had brought it up to mom and their dad. Mom told me I should talk to them a few times, but they continued coming to me. When we had a virtual graduation party for me last year, my then 10-year-old half-sister, now 11-year-old, corrected me in front of everyone for saying how I was sad dad had missed this part of my life. She told me he didn't miss it. He was right here. My mom tried to shush her, but she shut me down a second time. Other stuff has happened in between. And then two months ago, I was briefly home for a week. And during that time, they were going crazy on correcting me. Even had a younger ones copying them. And then they told me they were glad my dad was dead. And that it wasn't important. He was dumb and I was dumb for missing him and not adopting their dad. Some of what they said felt very mature. And like something someone else had said. But then they just kept repeating over and over that they were glad my dad was dead. And it made them happy. I used to call home to talk to them a few times a month and now I haven't. And my mom called me to get me to, but I told her I won't talk to them until I get a real apology. And until their behavior changes. She told me I need to be an understanding adult about this. I told her no. I told her the fastest way for me to never have anything to do with them again is to hear over a long period of time that they're glad my dad is dead and that my dad doesn't matter. She told me even that it would be extreme. I told her I don't love them more than my dad, and hearing them talk like that about him would fracture our relationship beyond repair. I told her three years of dealing with this stuff for it to get worse is too much. She and her husband called me out for being wrong about this, so I'm here to ask. Am I the a-hole? Edited to add. Jim has, over the course of the time I have known him, tried to get me to call him dad. He pushed it a few times over the years, but would bring it up regularly. But I never wanted to. Do. He will never be my father. I don't ever see the day where I love him either. I've had issues with him because of how often he brought it up and the pushing, but there's no fixing that now. Not the whole, but your mom and Jim sure are for not nipping this in the bud when it started. Saying they're just kids only means they'll grow up thinking this kind of harassing and bullying behavior is okay. Likely because at least Jim is behind this. And either the mother knows and has done nothing or she's behind it as well. The kids didn't come to this conclusion on their own. While kids are a lot more switched on than we often give them credit for, this is straight-up manipulation from a parent. Given her mother is trying to get Opie to be a doormat under the guise of being the adult, she's trying to manipulate Opie so the mother can go back to getting what she wants and ignoring Opie's emotional needs. All frankly points to the mother being as guilty as Jim. I'll be shocked if mother isn't behind it, seeing as she already let Opie know her marriage to her dad was not the best. She obviously has no love lost for her ex and would likely want him completely removed from existence, including all memories. Exactly this. These kids would have absolutely accepted that Opie has a different father to them and it would be completely normal to them had they had no outside interference telling them otherwise. Both Jim and mom have to have been in their ear all this time, trying to manipulate Opie through her siblings. And even if, on the slightest off chance that didn't happen, Mom should have been the one correcting them from the very beginning. Opie should never have had to correct them on their own. It is a parent's job to correct their children when they're doing something wrong and hurtful. It's clear as day that both Mom and Jim condone and encourage this behavior to pressure Opie to try to make her forget her dad, which is completely asinine behavior. I really feel for Opie. I cannot imagine people trying to tell me my mom, who died when I was the same age as Opie when her dad died, was bad and they were glad she was dead. Just that right there should have gotten those kids a very stern talking to, at the absolute least. You don't say stuff like that to people. Ever. Oh wow. I'm sorry you're dealing with this. Not day home. They might be kids, but they're old enough to know it's not right to tell someone you're glad their dad is dead. That's really mean and nasty and hurtful. Have you spoken with her dad about it? It might mean more coming from him if he tells them to stop. Assuming, of course, he doesn't also want you to call him dad. I had a whole part about him that I had to take out, but yeah. I have issues with him because he really wanted me to call him dad and has brought it up so many times and pushed it a few times as well since I've known him. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my stepdaughter to not bother coming to our house for school this year? I, 28 female, talked to my stepdaughter, 16 female, a few months before summer started and asked if she could babysit her siblings for the summer, since me and her father both work. And since I'm pregnant, all the extra money is needed. 
She said no because she has already made plans for the summer and she would rather not babysit the whole summer. But if I need help every once in a while, I could text her. I told her no because it's a full-time thing and I need her every day. A week or so later, I find out that she's babysitting her aunt's kids for the summer and when I ask her why she lied, she said that her aunt is paying her and helping her learn Spanish. She's half Puerto Rican. She also said that her aunt is taking her to Puerto Rico and she wanted to get more in touch with her culture. I told her that she should always choose family over money. And now I know that having her fun time is worth more than spending time with her family and don't even bother coming to living with us for school. She left me on read. It only texted my husband during Father's Day and on her sibling's birthday. School started and she hasn't come over once since the whole time when she would usually come every weekend, nor have my other stepkids since they only come when she comes over. My husband is now mad at me, blaming me for driving his kids away from him, but my kids keep asking when she is coming over. Am I the a-hole for telling my stepdaughter to not bother coming to school with us this year? Now for the top comments. You're the a-hole. Your stepdaughter doesn't exist to provide free childcare for you for a whole summer. Stop being salty that she chooses the person that values her enough to pay her. How are you surprised that your manipulative threats didn't work? Heck, even when I babysat my siblings, bio, my parents paid me because it's a job. It's a job and not an easy one. You're the a-hole. Isn't her aunt family? Aunt versus wicked stepmother? Sounds like she did choose family. Aunt who pays for babysitting, engages in mutual beneficial exchange, invests in exposing her niece to culture and travel that is meaningful to her niece, or a stepmom that is pregnant and can't afford childcare and wants a full-time free sitter. Damn, hard to choose. Yes, you're the a-hole like the rest. But how do you figure she lied? She said she made plans. You don't have to know what those plans are. And how is her aunt not family? You're all over the place here, OP. Her mom posted pictures of her on Facebook with her thanking her sister for connecting her daughter with her roots. And in the comments, they were talking about if she had to babysit on a weekend because her mom wants to take her to school shopping that weekend. Those were her plans. Were you expecting this babysitting for free? Based on all the extra monies needed, I'm going to guess yes. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my mom that my sister canceled our plans? I-18 female was supposed to celebrate my birthday the other day by just hanging out with my younger sister Kate, 16 female. We made plans earlier in the week to go to this movie I wanted to see and get dinner afterwards. It's normal for my sister and I to spend our birthdays with each other because our dad, who we live with, has never been the celebration type. So as soon as my sister and I could drive, we just started celebrating in our own. On the day off, I got dressed and everything because I thought my sister and I were still going through with the plans we made. But she came into my room and told me that she was going to her friend's house because it was his birthday and they were having a party. I tried not to look hurt about it because it's understandable that she'd want to hang out with her friends at a party more than she'd want to hang out with me at a movie theater, watching something she isn't interested in. I told her to have a good time and just kind of sat on my bed for a while. Our mom FaceTimed me a little while later and asked why I was still in my room if the movie had started already. I told her that Kate and I weren't going to the movie anymore and that Kate was at her friend's house celebrating his birthday. My mom hung up a bit after that and I ended up buying myself a cake and eating it in my room while watching TV on a group call with some friends. When my sister got home later that night, she immediately came up to my room and told me how petty it was for me to have told our mom on her and that she's tired of always having to hang out with me instead of having a good time with her friends. I didn't know she felt like that. I don't really go out often, so when I do, she's with me. If I had known she didn't like hanging out with me, I wouldn't have offered all the time. I told her that I didn't realize she wanted the party with her friends to be a secret, but she rolled her eyes and went to her room. She told our dad what happened, and he got on to me for getting back at my sister for canceling on me. He said that I should have known what would happen if I told our mom that Kate had other plans and that I'm in the wrong for snitching. I really didn't mean to do that, but I guess the impact of what I did matters more than the intention. One of my friends said that I didn't do anything wrong and that my sister should be apologizing to me, but I don't know. Not day whole. This is pretty tangled. Starting from the top. If Kate wanted to go out with her friends rather than with you, she should have said so instead of flying to you and changing plans at the last moment. Your mom, I think, was being a little clever. She probably suspected that your sister went out with friends when she wasn't supposed to and she called you to verify. 
She also probably suspected you needed a little comfort after your sister ditched you. Two birds, one stone. Your mom got on your sister's case for lying about what she was doing and for going out with friends without clearing it with the parental units. This, by the way, was a consequence of your sister's behavior. Your father is also out of line. He is trying to tell you that you should have helped your sister deceive your mother in order that your sister escape consequences for her actions. People lying to you does not make you an a-hole. People hurting you does not make you an a-hole. People expecting you to lie to cover up their a-holery does not make you an a-hole. You are not the a-hole here. You are, if anything, the victim. Out of everyone here, I think you and your mother are in the right. Everyone else misbehaved. Not the a-hole. If your dad accuses you of snitching, then he is admitting that what your sister did is wrong, and he is trying to hide it. Your mom asked you a question, and you answered, you did nothing wrong. Your sister is the total a-hole here. Leaving you on your birthday to hang out with her friends is a horrible thing to do. Not to mention she snitched on her for telling their mother. Dad is the a-hole here too. He didn't do anything for his daughter's 18th birthday, but came to yell at her because she slighted his favorite child. Though my best guess is that he got an earful from mom for allowing this to go down.